Hey gamers, today we're going to look at the magnificent and its expansion, Snow. Let's check it out. Setup for the game is simple. What you're going to do is shuffle all these master cards, bring them out here until you reach the amount of players here. For instance, this is a four player game, so I'm putting them all out here. You'll shuffle the train of tiles and put them next into the pre-printed printed areas of the board. You're going to have your three little trolleys you'll put in the purple, green, and orange area. Uh, your counters, uh, score counters will be here at the 0 slash 100. Your top hats will be here from first to last. You will have the dice there. Depending on the number of players, it tells you up here how many dice of each color that you will use. You will also be shuffling your posters deck and dealing out four over to the side. Also, each player is going to get one of these little boards. They can flip it to the A or B side, doesn't matter which one they want. And uh, just, just the areas here on the map are just a little bit different. Now, they're going to start with one trainer tile over in this corner here. They're going to start with one of each gym. And each player, besides the first player, is going to start with six coins. The first player will start with five coins. The last player will start with seven. So, once you've picked one of these, you're going to randomly uh, deal out a poster for everyone. So, they have one poster and they'll put it here in one of their little areas on their little player board. They will also have another little top hat here if they want to put on an additional show and an apprentice here. Uh, you can get more apprentices in the game by various ways, uh, covering up sections on your board here or uh, for certain rewards. Once you set up and put all your jewels here, gotten your starting money, uh, you're also going to get four master cards from the deck here. Everyone's going to be randomly drawn some, and they are going to give you different abilities in the game, and then ways to cash in victory points at the end of each round. You only get to cash in one every round, and the rule book will tell you what all the icon offer means. Uh, after that, you're going to place out these little tent tokens and put them all on all three of these little caravan spaces where you see the back of the poster cards there. You'll just put it there for right now. This game is very simple. What you're going to do, starting with the first player and moving around, is take one of the colored die, any one you want, and taking one of three simple actions. The first one would be to move one of the caravans. Now, if I took a green, red, or purple, that would mean I would get to move that caravan X amount of spaces. Now, I could have special uh, cards that I could put that die on. For instance, when I take one of these, I can place it on one of these and get that reward or get that benefit. For instance, if I placed it here, that would give me a coin. If I placed it here, I could cash in any one of my gems for two coins. Money's tight in the game. Here is only for purple die, which I don't have. It would give me a plus two on a purple die. This gives me a plus one on any die. Now, there are several different other cards in, in the deck here, each one giving you different abilities. Uh, and again, you'll just have to check the rule book for what they are. But I would place and put that on one of the four cards here. Now, you can only have one die per card. So once I put a die there, I may not place any more die on that card. The other three die will have to go here, regardless of if I could take the reward or not. So for instance, let's say the end of my turn looked like this, and I grabbed a six. If I put on this plus two purple, I wouldn't get any plus two because that is a green. But let's say I took the orange die in this case and put it right here with the plus one. Well, that would give me a three. Now, if I wanted you can always cash in a jewel of that color or a white jewel, which is basically a wild card jewel, and give plus two to that die. So I could move actually five if I got rid of the orange or seven spaces if I wanted to get rid of the white too. And what would happen? Well, you would move any one of these caravans. For instance, I got the orange, so it would be the orange. If I had picked a white die, I could choose any one of these. Of course, white die are wild as well. And what you do is you move around the board. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I would get any gems that I passed up. So that'd be a green, orange, purple, and orange. Now, if ever I have, you can only carry three of each gem on your board. If ever you have more than that, it says here at, the, uh, at your board here, it says, hey, for any gem you have plus four on your fourth gem, you'll just get an extra coin. You won't get the gem, but you will get the coin. Now, the only thing you don't get when you pass are these little tent tokens here. You have to actually land on them to get them. Now, can you stop early on that? Yes, you can always stop early on it, land on it, take it, and place it over your player board into one of the empty slots. You're going to gain that reward, whether it be coins, crystals, another apprentice, or you know four victory points, and you'll get a poster whenever you cover it up like that. It's like a one-time bonus. And now, whenever you complete, like for instance, if I completed this show here, I'd also get the little bonus 
put, uh, put beneath that. Now some of these bonuses have special conditions, meaning this one you have to get rid of a purple gem, you can get five bonus points. Again, very simple and the rule book will tell you what all the icon iconography does. So that's movement on the caravans. Now if ever you cross over an empty space, you see it has a poster card. In that case you would get to pick from one of the posters there and put it up here on, the play on your player board. So if I went through it again, I get all those gems plus a little poster. I could pick any of these posters I wanted to place it right over my player board, and then of course, replace that poster with a new one. The second action you can do is you can also grab little tent tokens, like little Tetris pieces, and put them on your player board. Now, the rule state, the first one you place down can go anywhere, and anything you cover, whether it be coins, crystals, apprentices, or points, you will get those things. After that, every other tent must touch another tent. You can have different colors touching different tents, like for instance, orange can touch green and so on and so forth but you can't have that you can't have them separated there or even touching cat catty corner they have to be together in a way or touching flat bear on so that would be an approved move as well but anyway want to get, want to get those well on your player board it will tell you what the dice number has to be and it'll have a big square or a little square meaning you'll get a big piece or a little piece and that's the little piece of green big piece uh, for green and each one of these orange purple and green will get that type of tent again it depends on the color die again so let's say for my second turn I took this six and I placed it here it would give me a coin now you think I get a power of six right but no these will add up since I have two oranges I have a six and an eight now I can't get the plus one again because I got that when I placed this die on there so I get a plus eight however I could have gotten rid of one of these gems to give it another plus two power. And looking down here, if I was to get just one more, maybe I get to that nine, I could have a big and a small. Now you can always get something lower than what the dice power is, but you can't mix and match. You know, you have to be, at least be to that amount in order to get it. So in this case, let's pay. A, uh, let's say I paid a coin here, or a I'm sorry, a, a, a gem. I would have a nine. I could take a big and a small orange. So. I take a big and a small orange, I cover up this, I get three coin and three victory points, and then I put my orange next to it and I would get another uh, poster there. And that's basically how it would work. Now the reason you need these tents is to put on shows because each show comes with requirements. You need a big purple and big orange tent to put this on. When you do it, you get six points. If it's coins, it'll also tell you coins over on this side too. Sometimes it will have a gem at the top here, and that basically tells you, hey, you also have to pay a gem. So for instance, this one here, paying an orange gem and having all three of those will net me eight points and two coin. After that, I'd flip this over and move it over into my discard pile over to the side of my board. Now again, depending on what color die you have will determine what color tint you'll be able to grab. If I was to grab this white die here instead of this orange die and I place it here, I could get my one coin steel and this can be added to anything, red, I'm sorry, orange, green, or purple. So it'd be five plus two. Or if I had the six from earlier, it'd be 11, 13. You know, and then I turn this in for 15. Ooh, 15, I could get a big one and two little ones. So you can do some combos here because the white dies are very nice, but there is a penalty you have to pay at the end of the round for those. Anyway, so building tents and covering up your square is important. At the end of the game, however many of these squares you have uh, finished will give you four victory points, and it says that right here at the bottom left-hand side of your player board. The final action you can do is put on a show. Now, Again, what does that die number have to be? Well, it has to equal these amounts here on the track in order to do one poster or two or three or four or all five, if you have five posters that you can do. Remember, you can only do each one once and then flip it over and put it up to the discard pile. So, for instance, if I wanted to do a power of two, then I would at least need an eight. Now, you see there are other sections here because maybe another player before me took that one. So I'd have to take the 10 spot in order to put on a show. Now, what does that mean? Well, again, I'm going to pick, let's say, this uh, six here. Okay, well, I needed a 10. So what I'm going to have to do is get rid of my purple and white gem to make that a, well, actually, I won't because I'm putting it on the plus two here. So that's an eight, and then get rid of the gem there. That's nine, 10. All right, so now I automatically have it and I can put on a show with two of my posters and let's say I had the requirements for these, I would score them, of course move them over to the side of my player board and move up on the marker track wherever I was, however many 
uh, tickets, this is basically tickets, this victory points, you sold to that magic show. Now, where this track ends determines who's going first, second, third, because after that, uh, you would move up, slide everything down, and that would be the new player order. Now, you can put on multiple shows. So, for instance, let's say I'd, I put on one here and then another one here later on. Well, which one do I remove? I remove the least most uh, uh, performance there and then shuffle it all down, and that would be the new player order. As a bonus action, one of the things you can do is use one of your apprentices. You can use it on a uh, tile token or trainer token of your own. This one requires two here. That was a bad example, but you can use them on your own. You'll have uh, up to three at the end of the game there, or you can use any of the general ones here on the board, and they do simple things like this one will reverse the movement of the caravan, or change even though I got a green I really wanted this to be a purple well I put my apprentice there and that can change that to any color I want all of the or I could rearrange my posters because I don't you, once you set it in there you can't rearrange it unless you go there then I can rearrange some of my posters because like oh I'm gonna perform this one and I definitely want the points over the coin this time uh, or, or you can go down here and pay two bucks to grab another poster if you need a poster or flip the die to its exact opposite so I don't need a six I need a one there all right. So whatever it is, you can do that by placing your apprentices there. And you will get any apprentices you have put out back for the next round. After everyone has picked four die, then you're going to add up how much you're going to have to pay. And what you're going to do is you're going to add up the highest value of your colored die. So in this case, it would be orange. I've got eight points in orange. So not only would I have to pay eight coins, but you also have to pay base value for any white die you have. So that would be... 13 coins. Now what happens if I only had 10 coins? Well, in the first round, I would lose a point for each coin I uh, do not have. So that'd be three. But as the rounds go deeper and deeper, uh, second round, you get minus two points for every uh, coin you're missing. Minus three points in the final round for every coin you're missing. So you don't want to spend more than what you actually have because it could hurt you in this game. Uh, after that, this determines, by the way, I should mention, at the end of each round, who's going to get the pick of their next master card and trainer tile that's next to it. You get to decide which one of these you want, and out of the one you just picked and the four on your player board, which one you, have to, you want to score. Uh, these score differently, as you see here, and depending on what you want to do, for instance, this one says, hey, for every coin you spend, you can get three points. The maximum coin you can spend is seven. It'll tell you what the maximum is on any of these. So let's say I had some five coin left over, so I want to do that and grab 15 points. So I cash this in, and that one's gone. Or maybe I wanted to cash this one in. Let's say I had a lot of these green tiles, maybe three of them. Well, that would net me 12 points. So I cash this one in instead. I only had to put it in my player board. But if I cash this one in, then I remove it, and then I pick one of these. Let's say I pick this one because I like that plus two on green die, and then I take the trainer tile associated with it, place it on my player board, and it goes to the next player in the, in the turn. Uh, so you'll keep doing this until everyone's picked one, and then remove the rest, re redistribute out more master cards and trainer tiles, and go again. Now, after the third round, what you're going to do is you're going to add up all of your points. You're going to score one more of these cards, and then what the four remaining cards that are in your hand, you'll get half points for each one of those. You can also take your crystals and fill in any areas, any dead areas on your board to complete a, uh, a square. So for instance, maybe I want to put two, a jewel there and there. Now I don't get the reward there, but that would finish off a square, which would give me an extra four victory points in the game. Of course, you need to subtract any points that you didn't pay, uh, you know, you, you, didn't, you couldn't pay money for on one of your shows. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. Now I want to show you the snow expansion. It comes with more MasterCards, more posters. Actually, all the posters are of snow. You'll actually remove one of the posters on your player board and put, always put a snow uh, poster there. So there'll always be one. This is like a, you'll shuffle this, well, this is not part of the deck, but you'll shuffle this deck here and you will uh, always put one from the snow deck, which has a different back there, 
at the end of the poster. So anyone can always get a snow poster. Uh, these that I showed you, the number ones, depending on how many number of players you have, it'll tell you what you start with. So instead of six coins, first player always starts with one coin minus that. So second player would start with a coin and so on and so forth. Third player would start with that and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's, th that's what those cards are for. It comes with an extra player, a white player. So it gives you extra dice, extra uh, tents, extra gems, extra tent tokens. And of course you have a new tile, this white snow tile. What you do every time you grab a white die, instead of building one of the color die, you may always build one of these white snow, die, uh, snow tile pieces for your tent. Um, you will deal out these little master cards here, or master tiles I should say here, flip them up. Of course for four and five players you would put more out every round. And you're going to put extra posters over here, so there'd be, you know, four other posters here. And then you'll have more trainer tiles here that you'll put out, and some tent tokens here. And basically what it is, is every round, one of your turns is going to be to deal with this board. And you're going to take one of these rewards. Okay, now what if I don't want to take it? Like two coins for six points. Man, I only have two coins. Okay, that's fine. You can just take it and discard it. But if you did, you could take that and take the reward. Now, some of these rewards will let you take a, like, uh, take a, training, a, a trainer tile here, or take a poster here, or take one of the you know, tent tiles that are over here. It may let you take one of the uh, special things that are on this board. But at the same time, like I said, this just gives you a little bit extra push. And of course, the rule book tells you the iconography, the rules for each one. But it gives you just an extra turn to get that extra move or that extra victory points, whatever you need in your game. Finally, they do have a, uh, some, a, a few promos you can get from the publisher's website with more master cards and more of these master tiles for the snow expansion. And that's the game. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, the whole reason I got those board games from Amos Day on sale was because this one was on sale. This is the only one that I'd heard about previous uh, to looking at their sale, and this is the one that I've always wanted to try but didn't want to pay that high price. I can tell you it's worth the regular price that people are putting it online for right now, and I do see sales of this. Now, I got it for 15 bucks, which is a great deal. You can find it for 30 bucks. It's a great deal. This game has it all. It has dice selection, dice manipulation, tile placement, engine building. It just combines everything, and it's really smooth. At first, my board game group, the first round or so, like, Oh, uh, what's going on here? What are my choices? And I just kind of kept having to simplify it for them. And uh, But after a while, we all got into it. Now, playing this over and over again, different paths to victory, different uh, basic strategies you can have, and I've played differently each time. Uh, it's been so much fun to play because there's so many different strategies there. Uh, you know, which die you pick, what number you pick, <laughs> you know, what, what card you cash in now. Because, man, I really like this ability. I don't want to cash in this card right now, but it's going to get me the most points. But mm, maybe if I keep it one more round, I can, I, I can score bigger on it. And I love how they put a max value on everything so you don't just, you know, go crazy and get a bunch of that one thing to score tons of points at the end. You definitely want to put on magic shows. The first round, you may not put on a single one. The second one, you're definitely putting on one. And the third round, you're definitely putting on two. So great balance of that. I, I almost wanted to go a fourth round. That's how much I love the game. But then again, you'd want to do three shows probably if you went a third round. What about snow? Now, this was uh, kind of new when it came out when I got it. And I got it when I got the base game. It's like, why not? Uh, I played it only once without snow. The rest of the time I play with snow, and I love snow. Snow gives you that extra uh, turn where you can get one of those tiles, depending on when you want to take that action is big too. Usually people take it at the beginning. But the thing is, though, it gives you that extra turn to get you those extra points, to get you that extra whatever, you know, to maybe pull out the win. So I like all the extra. Plus, it makes white die more attractive because when we played the base game, I think only once, Someone got a white die in the one game we played with it, and then when you play snow, people are getting white die, right? Because they want they want to complete that snow poster card, or they want you know the special you know little tile that goes with it. So that was pretty smart because a lot. Of, I don't think without this you won't be picking the white die as much. This kind of influences you to pick that white die. So yes, I can recommend this. The artwork was a little weird to me, but I'm used to it now. Uh, for the promo tiles or in the promo cards. I mean, yeah, if you want it, get it. It doesn't really add anything special to the game. Overall, I love this game. It's the best one out of the whole uh, shipment that I got from Mama's Day. And I kind of already knew that because I knew this was a game that was right up my alley. Uh, my gaming group enjoyed it as well. It's, it's just a solid game. Absolutely love it. Can recommend it. The Magnificent. All right, folks. That's it for now. See you next time.